I'm the 86-year-old daughter. <laughs> Good morning to all of you. There's so many wonderful faces that I'm seeing here. Thank you so much for coming. I really thank you for being here today because you will now pay, play a part of the journey of telling my father's story. It can be simply told in 11 words. Discrimination hurts. A wrong has been made right. All is forgiven. My father will posthumously be awarded the Medal of Honor by the President of the United States. And by the way, the President called me and we had a lovely, lovely conversation. He's a mensch. <laughs> the Medal of Honor is an upgrade from the Distinguished Service Cross that he received for valor as a rifleman from August 7th through 9th, 1918. Military records show that my father left the cover of his platoon trench three times, crossed in open space with no cover. It actually says the sun was shining, there was no cover, repeatedly exposing himself to heavy machine gun and rifle fire in order to rescue his wounded men. After officers and senior non-commissioned officers had become casualties, my father took command of his platoon, leading them all to safety. He had a chance to stay with them too, but he didn't take that. He returned to the battlefield, continuing to fight until he was badly wounded in the head and took shrapnel in his back. He was found unconscious the next day and was taken to the hospital where he remained for three months. It has taken us 13 years to get here today. The journey began with Colonel Erwin B. Burtnick, retired of the Jewish War Veterans. Colonel Burtnick is an expert in awards and decorations. He reviewed my father's citation and said that he felt it did deserve an upgrade. He encouraged me to speak to my local congressman and start the process of requesting a review. At the time, I was living in the small town of Lavity, Missouri in Franklin County. <coughs> my congressman, Blaine Luchtmeyer, immediately said he would help me. Congressman Luchtmeyer, his wonderful staff, and Colonel Burtnick took this on full force. This would not have happened without them. Though my father always told me his war experience was never about medals. I knew in my heart he was deserving of the highest military award for valor, the Medal of Honor. My father was fully satisfied with having received our nation's second highest military honor, the Distinguished Service Cross, but he wanted only to serve his country. When the President called me last month to tell me that he had approved the Medal of Honor, I felt an enormous sense of pride as an American Jew, and for him, and for our family, and for the entire Jewish community. So many brave men and women performed heroic acts that were never witnessed or acknowledged. I will accept this medal on behalf of them, too. This supreme honor is in the name of William Shemin, but it would please him if it were also dedicated to the fallen, the survivors, and their families who did not have the proper paperwork or representation depicting their valor. I will be shortly traveling to, be traveling to Washington, D.C. to tell my father's story, recognizing his heroism and the heroism of so many others. Again, thank you all so much for coming, and at this time, I would be probably telling you more than you want to know about my father. So who wants a question? Yes, Bob. Uh, Bob Cohn of the Jewish Life, privileged to be here. Congratulations to you. Thank you, Bob. Your father's memory. <laughs> I'm getting the impression that there are, you mentioned that there are others uh, in the same category as your father, possibly other uh, Jewish war veterans, not only for World War I, but for the wars that followed. Uh, are there efforts being made to review those cases as well? Yes, there was the Lenny Kravitz World War uh, II Veterans Act, and this is where I got started. 
but they wouldn't allow for discrimination. This was open to any Jewish veteran that wished to be reviewed and felt there was anti-Semitism involved. And there were many with that, but they wouldn't allow a World War I veteran. And I said, what is the difference in discrimination between World War I or World War II or the Spanish or the, anywhere, it's all disgusting. And this was our battle. We had to fight 13 years to come up with a congressional review in my father's name. It is now the world, the William Shemin World War I Veterans Act. It was good for one year. Any person that was Jewish had an opportunity for congressional review, but it had to be done during that, that year. And there were over 50 that did, but none of them raised to the level of the Medal of Honor. So yes, the two, that, that answers your question, doesn't Thank it, Bob? OK. Surely you have questions. I have so much information. <laughs> yes, how are you? Good to I'm see well. you, Kenny. Good, good yes. to see you, Elsie. Yes. And before I ask my question, I want this audience to acknowledge I've had the pleasure, along with Marcy Mayor Eisen, to know, and others perhaps in the room, Elsie, for well more than uh, 30 years. We go back centuries. Kenny was a kid. He was <laughs> in diapers when I knew him. An extraordinary community <laughs> volunteer for trips to Israel, yes. to support, and on and on. Uh, it was exhausting, wasn't it, Kenny? <laughs> forever. And also, uh, a letter, the first, if I'm correct, first letter winner in basketball at Syracuse University. Yes, the big of the deal. I still wear my basketball so, pants. Oh, yes, indeed, I do. So, so now, my question, <laughs> yes. now my question to you. Uh, yes. Uh, I read the article in the Post, of course, and so glad and gratified uh, oh, that it's happening. Thank you, event. Kenny. Uh, thank but you. But tell us a bit more about your dad. What happened after World War II? Your family, your siblings? You mean after World War I? One. Yes. What did he do? Yes. What yeah. Was, what was life Well, like? you know, he was very quick to anger. There were definitive signs of what they called in a nervous disorder. It was called battle fatigue in World War II. Of course, there was no help, nothing. Uh, and the wounds on his back, they couldn't pull the shrapnel out. It was too close to the spine. He was deaf from the wound. But despite all of that, because he was wounded, he got a, a three-year scholarship to Syracuse University. He already had enough credits before he went into the Army. So he finished at Syracuse at the College of Forestry, and then he and his father opened up a greenhouse and nursery business, can you believe? Cindy would know, in the Bronx. There, were, there was farmland in the Bronx. We grew up in the greenhouse and nursery business, and he was very successful despite this, but we, he never could go to sleep. I mean, he would sleep three hours at night and be up at four in the morning. He still raised three kids, sent us all to college, was very successful. My brother, and then when he finally retired, it, it was so hard for him to walk. Life was just very, very hard. He still remained very much in touch with other veterans, especially the Jewish war veterans. We lived near a place where the Bund had meetings, and I can remember him coming home beaten up. and. I feel sorry for anybody that engaged my father because these were a bunch of Nazis and here was a Jewish family living right next door to them. And uh, they would, this is where he started the Jewish War Veterans chapter right there to make sure that there were a bunch of Jewish guys from World War I that would meet these Nazis and really teach them a lesson. My father was a wrestler, a boxer, a semi-pro baseball player. He played varsity football and lacrosse. So anybody that, en that engaged with my father, I really feel sorry for. <laughs> so the business was turned over to my brother. My brother then, all, we all went to Syracuse, all of us. Ellen, where are you? Is Ellen, Ellen's not here, she's another Syracusean. And uh, uh, so he, 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 how can I describe this? It was called agribusiness now. I mean, he it was the first one shop stop at a greenhouse and nursery place where you could get underground watering systems. And it was kind of like a Walmart of greenhouse and nurseries. And it grew so big 
that there are 12 locations, and it's called Shemin, Shemin Nurseries, throughout the United States, Canada, Holland, and of course, Israel. So what happened to my father was despite the nervous disorder and, and the wounds and everything, he still was able to have a life. And he, by the way, he did have a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, very quickly, uh, I'll tell you, we grew up in such a military environment. We were such good kids. You could take us, the three of us, anywhere. And we were so polite because my father, the sergeant, oh boy, he would say to my sister and I in the morning when we would have breakfast, after breakfast, he'd say to my sister and I, all right, men, let's go to work. <laughs> and, and by the way, we had to police the grounds. And there were 14 grandchildren between the three of us. They all went through basic training with my father. Everybody knows how to salute. Uh, I mean, they can fold a flag the right way. You ask those 14 kids, every one of them. But he taught us all to always give back more than you're asked to do. The, there were a lot of ethical issues involved about being honest, being on time, being disciplined. And the, all three of us, we took that through our lives and we hope that there's one of my kids over there. When, mm -hmm. My kids are all in their 40s, 50s, and one of them in their 60s. I call them the kids. From my father came this wonderful generosity and this wonderful sense of honor. If our country needs you, you go. No discussion, you go. And you do more than is asked for you. So, yes, good to see you too. Joe Molchanski. Yes. We go way back. With we Ethiopian, certainly do. Ethiopian education. Yes. Affairs. It's 1983. That's wonderful. Um, Elsie, why did you choose this venue for your press conference to announce this? This is all about anti Semitism. This is all about our Jewish community. We're all worried. There isn't a person in this room, if you are Jewish, that is not worried about what is happening in Europe and the United States. I wanted this to emanate from the heart of the Jewish community. This building, with all of its facilities from the Holocaust on to my Cindy, and I've been in school here forever, and Andrew, wonderful CEO, how wonderful. You should have heard his interview uh, last yesterday. It was, he gave us all courage. I wanted the world to see that we have a Jewish man that fought like hell, is now receiving by our President of the United States the highest military award afforded. And he fought in the infantry, right up front and center. I wanted us all to be proud of this, and I want the world to see it. That's why I asked my wonderful friend, Captain Quinn, graduate of Wash U, may I say. <laughs> um, I asked permission, and he went up to the chain of command, and they said, the Army has been so wonderful. Look at Major Stover over here. Look, look at her. I mean, for women, is this great for us to see this? Look over here. She's going to have a baby, and she's a technician. She's a sergeant. How terrific is this? I get off on a thousand tangents. What was the question? <laughs> uh, did I answer it? Okay, as long as I answered it. Do any in the back? Yes. And here's Jean. Any any press people uh, have questions? I just wanted to ask you if you could talk a little bit about once you receive the medal, what you're going to do in terms of putting yes. it on the road. Yes. 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 Indeed. <laughs> I have a new best friend in the White House. Can you believe it? I mean, because the president and I had a nice visit. So he said to me, I am so looking forward to meeting you and your family. My family are 66 of us, 64 are family. Only two are Colonel Burtnick and his wife, so we're all going to be there. So we arrive on Monday, and the Army is hosting a lovely, lovely reception for the family. The next day, we go to the White House. How marvelous is that? to receive the Medal of Honor with, have you read about Private Henry Jack Johnson? A world, he's African American. They went through the same business that we did of upgrading a DSC. He has an amazing citation, but nobody paid any attention to him. Um, he got no help when he came out wounded. He died at 32, 
in poverty and on the street. And he had people behind him. There were no direct descendants left. But Senator Chuck Schumer heard the story. And he has been shepherding Private Johnson's story all the way up to the top, to the president. He will be receiving the Medal of Honor with my father. There is a picture of a very handsome Jewish man, a very handsome African-American man, each with discrimination up the wazoo, really big discrimination, each receiving the Medal of Honor from our president, an African-American. What a story that is and how beautiful that is. So then there is a reception a little later on that day where the president will be visiting with all of us, just all of us. I, I still can't get it through my head. The next day is at the Pentagon, the uh, Hall of Heroes. And there the chief, what is it, the chief of all the, of the staff? Yeah. Yes, of all of our military will be there to speak. And I know that uh, the chief of staff of the Army is going to be there. And I think the vice president, they're going to be uh, so many big, and all the senators. And I heard something so touching, ladies and gentlemen that I heard that in the back of this beautiful auditorium, if you can envision a big high wall, and there were only 3,500 names of people of the Medal of Honor, and they have superimposed, have you seen it, John? Superimposed the three Medals of Honors for the three services. They must be at least 15 feet high on a screen in back, and then there's an auditorium. So the family comes in, and all the big deals come and sit down, but the military, fills that whole auditorium. Nobody orders them to do this. But men and women in the military just quietly come in and sit in the back just to watch this, just to watch, to hear the stories, to see the families, to listen to all of the top military people talk about how important this is. And I just thought that was just so lovely. So after that's done, only 10 of us will have lunch with whomever is inviting us. Um, and then the, uh, they said that the, what is it, the tattoo again? The, um, it, it's called the Twilight Tattoo. I thought we were all gonna get tattooed with the weather. <laughs> you know, it, it's their marching band. And they call it a tattoo. How, would, I mean, wouldn't you think the same thing? Like, so they are doing a performance. Now they only perform for the Medal of Honor, the President, and heads of state. That's it. And they're performing for our family. How great is that? So that's, that's the question. That's the answer to it. Always the longer way around when you ask a question. We have time for one more question. Okay. Yes? Can you tell about Joe? We, we go back how long? 34 years. Yes. Uh, will you tell about Joe and any other grandchildren who have carried yes. the legacy of Yes, you know, the legacy, big legacy from my father. Um, my brother uh, was 16 when he joined the National Guard. Uh, then he went to Syracuse when he graduated. Um, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army, in the United States Air Force. He attained, to, I think it was in five years during the Korean War, uh, the rank of major. My son, this is William Roth, is he adorable? He's, that's, William. <laughs> yeah, that's William. Can you believe he's a Marine for four years? And then my youngest son, Joe, who you know, uh, Joe just retired. It's so hard to think your baby is retired. Uh, he was in the Navy, he was a commander, um, served on two aircraft carriers, very involved in this last war in Afghanistan, very seriously involved. Um, he now, at uh, 43, 44, uh, is in law school. So that's what happened to Joe. He was part of the Jay's big brother, initially then big sister program. And uh, how wonderful, because I was widowed at a very early age. And he really needed uh, a male presence in our family. And there was the wonderful executive director, how wonderful she was. Stretched right out of WashU, and what a job, so professional. <laughs> And so the, thank God for the J. I can just tell you that for our family and all the wonderful services that they provided. Joe was with our big brother, Eli Perry, from age seven to 17. And part of who he is and who he became is 
is due to his wonderful big brother and the marvelous program that the Jewish Community Center had offered people like me. So I guess, is it over? So sorry. Come visit me. I'll tell you more.